peer review. It's Huawei or Huawei. I guess it's the Brewers. I like hearing talking and noise. I gotta tell you, my Tuesday afternoon like class was like ghosted out, quiet, and it freaked me out. <laughs> it was on alcohol. So. Yeah, All right. This is my second year students. They know each other four semesters. <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. They're having a down day and they just didn't say nothing. That's horrible. All right. Digital photography, week one. Full disclosure this first class is going to be long and a lot of talking, whereas in future classes, we'll be out doing stuff more. But there's a lot of basic information I need to get in your hands today so that you can go out and start taking pictures immediately. So um, hang on. <laughs> All right. Who in here has shot with a film camera and actually had film? Anybody? All right. Thank you. Who has actually developed film? Anybody been in a darkroom? Sweet. All right. So you know the fun and horror of that, right? <laughs> Very scary. So. Thinking of, especially if you know the difference, if you've done both, what are some advantages that digital has over traditional photography? Not even necessarily film. Yeah. Is instant access on all your image box. Yes. Instant gratification, right? We look at the back of our screen, of the LED or LCD screen, whatever, to see in general if it turned out, right? Or if people's eyes are open or anything like that. I actually have an SLR real film camera still, and I got it out one day and I was using it. The second I took a picture, I dropped it down to look at the, it's a film camera. There's nothing to look at. It was really weird. So that helps with knowing if you got the shot or not, right? Okay. What else is a huge advantage that digital has? Yeah. Editing after the fact, so you, like just basic things like brightness and such don't have to be as much of a factor. Yeah. Initially. Yeah. And with film, if anybody lived in the day of only film, we still had to digitize those and work with them in Photoshop, but this is a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, what you really need is a battery because you don't need to buy film. Right. Yeah, so so your SD card yeah, is, yeah, you need that too. Yeah. <laughs> but that will hold a lot of pictures. And when it's full, do you need to go buy another one? I had to share that with my mom back in the day when she got her first digital camera. Because like film, you use it, you're done, right? You buy another roll of film. So she was, I'm like, why do you have six SD cards? Well, that one's full. I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Let's talk. So that's a cool thing. What else? You don't have to worry about damaging uh, a digital film, like the digital photography compared to traditional, because if that stuff hits the light while well, it's in the dark room, you destroy it. It's toast, right? You don't just open up the back of your film camera willy-nilly without ruining it or screwing it up in the dark room. So that's a huge relief. Anybody else? Aren't yeah. the digital cameras cheaper nowadays? Pro I mean, cameras in general have come down in price. If you wanted to buy a film... Uh, yeah, uh, I'm talking about the, not the like, like, things you get at Walgreens. Uh, yeah. Oh. And um, and I'm talking about like uh, an actual like, film camera. Yeah. You think would be more expensive than actual I, digital? I. I, I don't think anymore they are because I think like the the glass and the body and all that is the same. Like the brains of the digital, yes, but that's so cheap to produce now. They've got that price down. I, don't, I haven't bought a traditional film camera in so long, I couldn't tell you. But in general, digital has come down over the years, too, which is a huge relief. I don't know. Um, the film cameras that I know that are still really expensive are the medium format, the big Hasselblad cameras that like some professionals use still. Mm -hmm. they still kind of the they're expensive. Yeah. They're like 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Do they what? Do they still even use that? Because I didn't know what you was talking about. I thought you was talking about some new technology type of something for film. And I'm thinking back, and I remember back, like, the camera you opened the back. Yeah, you had film Polaroid cameras. Or, Come on. Like the, I, well, Polaroid, too. Right? So you talking to me, they, even, they still use that? Like, when you put the film, they take a little roll, put it in a yes. little cup, thing. I mean, not many people, I don't think, use it anymore. Wow. But it still exists. You can really? still special order film. Maybe, but that shit feel like it's dinosaur anymore. <laughs> Polaroid's made a comeback, too. Yeah. They're kind of trendy and cool again. 
the younger set thinks that's pretty cool. Were taken on regular film. What? My wedding pictures were taken yeah. on regular film. Like, yeah. it wasn't that long ago. No, <laughs> I still have um, fo print photos, which I actually really miss. I have piles and piles of print photos of my kids when they were really young. And then I got a digital camera, and their life stopped. I don't have them printed out anymore. They're all living on a computer, which is sad, especially if the computer dies. <laughs> what else? What other advantages can you think of? Yeah. It's just time in general. You don't have to wait to develop the film and then putting it on the actual photo. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So if you were in a dark room, that definitely took time. But even if you had film, if you were an average person, you had to take it somewhere to get developed. One hour photography or one hour developing was like the greatest, coolest thing on earth when that came out. Next day was cool. Used to be like seven days. Come back in seven days and we'll have your pictures ready for you. I know, what? <laughs> it's just crazy to think about. What if somebody said, like, you wanted to sell your car and they said, cool, um, send me a pic, get a picture of it. I need to see a picture first. Go back 25 years. How long would that process have taken? A while. Take the picture, develop it, mail it to them probably, right? Also, how did we buy film? Those of you that bought film, do you remember what would determine which version of film you bought? Do you remember there were 12, 24, and 36 exposures? That's how you'd buy film. So you have 12 shots, 24 shots, or 36. When you're out, you're out. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are or what's going on. When you run out of film, you're out, unless you have a whole other role to put in. I remember there were different kinds of cartridges too. Like there was the one that was kind of a cylinder shape that you pulled the film out, and then there was the one that kind of it all stayed in one piece of plastic, or it had like two round bit. Really? Oh, cheaper yeah, cameras. Remember the that. cheaper cameras had oh. the kind that had like the two rolls yeah. on either end. You know, it kind of looked like a little pair of binoculars. Yeah. Just kind of shaped. I do remember. Those were for the cheaper cameras. Huh. I remember. Versus so the thirty-five millimeter. What if you had a roll of 36 and you'd taken five pictures and somebody wants this car shot? Are you going to, you have to either finish the film or waste the film at that point, right? That was also a bummer. You're shooting picture six, seven, eight of your car, and then from nine to 36, you're either, if you're in a hurry, you're wasting it completely. You're rewinding, you're hitting rewind <coughs> on your camera, it's getting sucked back into the little cartridge and you're done. Digital, we don't have that problem. We can take one or a thousand. So that's a huge perk. Who else bought film and can remember some other consideration that you had with film, buying film? This is the other big difference between digital and traditional film photography. Anybody remember buying different ISO film speeds? 100 speed, 400 speed, does that ring a bell? Kinda, sorta. So 100 speed film was kind of the normal day-to-day, -day, every use, um, perfect for outside, low ISO. If you knew that you were going to be inside taking a lot of shots, you would go with a faster film, a higher ISO that would react to whatever light hit it, it would kind of magnify, it would make it brighter. So wedding photographers especially, if they're inside in a dark church or a candlelit church, they had to use fast film. But what if they start outside taking pictures and they go inside and they have only one speed of film? You can't swap out film in the middle, right? Your best bet was to have two cameras, one with a low speed, one with high speed. Guess what we can do on our digital cameras? We can change the ISO shot by shot. And we will. We'll learn how to do that. So if you're in a darkish situation and you want to amplify the light a little bit, make all of it count, you go to a higher ISO speed. So um, as far as the quality, some people say, oh, digital is so much better and sharper. And true film enthusiasts will say film's better. Old school cameras are better. I don't know. The nice thing with digital is they're getting more and more megapixels, so they are more and more beautiful. Um, there's a lot you can do with them. And I think just the idea that you can take unlimited photos, delete them as you go along if they're crummy. How many of us take the time to do that? Not usually, right? Not on the scene until we run out. Like our, we actually fill our card, which hardly ever happens. But then you're like, oh crap. And you look back at what pictures you can delete to keep going, going on. So lots of advantages of digital. Um, what makes a photograph great? I'm going to attempt to show this video. 
and <clears throat> I just want you to kind of think about what really makes, whoops, for strong photography. The gist of that very sad video was photography is pretty powerful, right? Um, captures moments that um, shouldn't forget, and sometimes we want to kind of look away, so that's a tough one. But what makes a photo good? You guys kind of instinctually know what makes a photo good or what makes a photo look like this is a horrible photo. I don't know why they did this. So we're going to talk about that just from a gut reaction. So I also have this on your screens because sometimes it's hard to see up here. Um, can we agree this is a good photo? Okay. Rob, what don't you like? <laughs> right, too colorful. <laughs> so what makes this um, good? Color? I mean, it's an amazing sunset, sunrise, something. Okay, explain that better or more. Yeah. Anybody else want to elaborate or what else makes this photo good? Yeah. So what really makes this a strong photo that maybe um, you or I or our friends or our parents, whatever, might not get, they might be here at this exact same second, they might have the exact same quality camera, but they tend to walk out and just take the picture. The difference here is the vantage point or getting lower. The rock structure that you were talking about, Rob, is they have foreground in here. And that's really something unique in landscape pictures that professional or better photographers will do over amateurs or snapshots, is you get down and you get part of the foreground in. So you have foreground, middle ground, and background. And just people that just have cameras and run out and take pictures don't tend to get down low and get that foreground in it. And that makes a huge difference. So from these three photos, which one do you guys dislike the most or is the most boring? Bottom right. Bottom right, we all agree. So that's kind of, um, that's not how you see it in the real world, right? That's zoomed in really tight. You don't see any foreground. It's just too much. These other shots, you know, this one, you're not necessarily down low, but it has foreground because you're at a high vantage point to start with. So you can see the foreground of the rocks and the trees. This one, especially, the lower picture, they've got a lot of foreground in that landscape shot. So that makes it a good picture. All right, how about with people pictures? Do we agree that these are all fairly good, strong people pictures? Yes. Okay. Um, there's no right or wrong. How many of you of this four pack up here, these, these two couples, how many of you prefer the one on the left where they're looking at each other? Okay, how many of you prefer the one on the right? That's on the context. Right, it does. So I'm just saying gut reaction. Like which one if you had to, let's say these were both of your sets of grandparents, which one would you want? Which one? Left. Left? Right. You'd say right. Okay, the cool thing is, unlike a lot of pictures that are really staged, they both have a lot of personality and action and happiness, right? So they're not, they are looking at the camera in this one, but you can tell that he caught, he or she caught them at a certain time when they were kind of giggling, and you know, this is the shot before. So a cool thing to do when you're taking portraits, single shot, single people in them or groups, is to keep shooting and kind of have them relax and laugh and giggle and put your camera on that burst mode where it's ch -ch 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 -ch. because quite often one of those 10 shots is really going to have the personality that you're going for, okay? Um, this lower left shot, um, how many of you know right now today how to get that shot? And the trick of it is, is that there's depth of field, right? There's blur in front and then she's in focus. How many of you right now today know how to get that shot? Okay, two, three-ish, four-ish, five-ish, six-ish, okay? How many of the rest of you are not sure or have never been able to achieve that on your cameras? Yeah, okay. So we're gonna learn how to do that even on the point and shoots as best we can. So that's all about depth of field and that's something that you can't achieve in auto mode. So those of us that have cameras, and we all do I think, that have the green thing or the auto, that's where the camera does all the work for you. It's really hard to get a shot like that in auto mode, probably impossible. Um, this picture really fills the frame. Part of her face is cut off, but it doesn't look like an accident. It looks intentional, the way they cropped it, so that's good. 
And then this one is just a different vantage point, being up high. So if you want to get inspiration of good photographs, you want to look at awesome photographs, tell me some places you might look. Pinterest. Pinterest, okay. Google images, and what would you search for, do you think? <laughs> Landscapes? Yeah. Awesome lands good landscape shots. That would pull up a bunch. Where else? I look at other photographers' pages. Yeah, actual photographers. Here's the thing we're going to talk about today. In the last, especially I'd say five years, um, especially as digital SLRs are a little bit more and more affordable all the time. Um, not to be mean, but how many of you know a friend that has a digital camera and then therefore is a photographer and has their own photography business and maybe shouldn't? Now look at all the hands. <laughs> right? And they probably even have a watermark and it just kills me. It's like, really? So you got to be careful what photographer sites you go to. But I totally agree. Good photographers, you go there and you're like, oh my God, that is like, I love the feeling. I love the story there. Um, what is a magazine that you may or may not have ever seen in real life but have probably heard of that takes, it's known for their amazing landscape photography? National Geographic. Yep, National, National Geographic. Go to their website. Insane <laughs> photography. Somebody like um, the New York Times, Boston Globe, USA Today, they're known for taking strong photos, journalistic photos. So there's lots of places. Another one is where we could buy stock photography. Presumably, if we're going there to buy it, it's good photos, right? It's good composition, good everything. So a couple of stock photography sites, in addition to the Adobe stuff that you have access to. iStock is one, Dreams Time is, is another. And there's a website called 500px Pixels, which is a, it's similar to that, but it's done by, um, like photographers showcase their work there, which is pretty cool. So if you've never been to it, um, it's fun to look around. Um, so get inspired and share your best photos. You can sign in, but if you don't want to sign in, if I just want to do discover, um, you know, here are some examples of the different photos that you'll find on this site. So really good ideas of strong photography as far as it composition. It's raining. And put him in the water. Yeah. It's a uh, strong composition, good exposure. Maybe good processing after the fact. You can tell some of them that you know have had pro uh, processing in Photoshop. But again, this is a site where you could get ideas for good photographs. Um, iStock is another one. And if you were to search for, um, say you needed a horse picture, there's some pretty strong, most of them are quite amazing and strong. So good place to go get inspiration. So what I want you to do in small groups, um, do you want to swing around with that? Oh, never mind. There's two, two. You guys make two groups of two, however you want. Um, you two can go together, and then Robin Logan, you want to go together, and then Jacob, do you want to pop over and go with Sylvia and Zach? Sure. Gather around um, one or two computers, whatever you want to do, and I want you to look for examples of good and bad photographs. When I say bad, I mean like they chopped off a person's forehead and it wasn't on purpose. They just composed it wrong. Or it's this great glamour shot, but there's a car half in the picture. Where have you guys seen examples of these? Okay. <laughs> Facebook, your friends maybe? Yeah, photo bombing, but not even on purpose. Like they were just too lazy. The photographer was too lazy to move two steps this way to get the hood of the car out of their shot. Like that kind of bad. I want you to be careful. Do not Google bad photos because you might be taken to a site that is banned here at LTC. So be careful how you word your Google search when you do this. Yes, good. So what I want you to do is in your group, I want you to find examples of two photos that are just awesome, like you love them so much, they really, like something about them is so cool, and then too bad. And then you're gonna send me an email with links, hyperlinks to those URLs, okay? So go, go find 
Too awesome. I will give you your computer back. That might be helpful.